even after the spring game and spring football, Pitt is trying to hit the portal, and I think they specifically need one position. Let's talk about that one position today on this episode of Locked On Pitt. You are Locked On Pitt, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Panthers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ron, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pit Podcast. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. All right, everybody. Here's the thing. When we are talking about pit football in the year 2023, we know what we are getting in many degrees. And what I mean by that is you know you're getting more of the offensive coordinator. You certainly know the type of defense you're getting. But maybe you don't know just everything. And one of those things you might not know is, in my opinion, this very interesting wide receiver. I think it is one of the biggest questions on this team, both as a fascinating question and just as a what is their question. So let's talk about this. Because I have a few thoughts on, on what is there and who this team could potentially go after. First of all, you look from top to bottom at this team. And Pitt football has obviously two very key guys that I just think jump out at the page. And that is Kanani Mumfield and Bub Meets. You know, Mumfield to me is, is a dude that is so underrated in the fan base. I get it. He didn't have the smooth this year last year. He, transitioning up from the MAC to the ACC, it's a faster, quicker game. Not everybody can transition there, especially a guy when Mumfield was as young as he was. You know, he, he's a young player still, uh, a guy that is still kind of working through everything. Only had played one year of collegiate ball, so. He's still learning everything. And so Kanade is, is kind of a, a player that isn't all just at his height yet. And he still had a really solid year. I mean, looking at it, he had 58 receptions for 553 yards. Now, you would have liked for him to have more touchdowns. He only had one. But I, I thought that this was a really good, solid end of the year, especially I thought he was really good in that UCLA game. What you look at with Mumfield, man, to me is this is a dude that has not reached his potential yet, and he's going to. There's all the positive signs there. You know, he was getting open on film, wasn't getting targeted a ton. And more importantly... When you look at this team, he, to me, is the wide receiver one of this group. He really is. Because his route running is better than anyone else's out there right now. He has smooth routes. I think that's the one thing that really I really like about him. His routes are crisp, and he's got easy separation ability that I'm not sure anyone else on the team has that naturally. You know, I, I think there are guys that are developing that as part of their skill set. I think that there are guys that are starting to kind of get there, but I don't think anyone's absolutely there the way Kanani Mumfield is right there. I think he is wholly unique in that aspect of his game. I think that's a big thing to kind of take from it and I just think that this dude is a guy that you have to look out for as a potential player to break out. So when we're talking about transfers, you know, I think it's going to be hard to usurp Kanani Mumfield. I really do. I'm higher on Kanani Mumfield than a lot of people are. And I'm telling you right now, I had faith in him last year. I have so much faith in him this year. Again, believe in Kanani Mumfield. He is legitimate. He is there. That is a good football player. And Kanani Mumfield should absolutely be a guy 
that everyone keeps their eye out for because he can play, man. And, and, and then you kind of look at Bub Means, who I thought had a really good spring. You know, he was one of the best out kind of outcomes of this spring to me. He looked like he was just on a different level. There, it looked like something there was clicking that wasn't there previously. You know, whether that's the speed of the game or, or whatever, something there is clicking with Bub Means that was not clicking last year. And I think, you know, when you come up from Louisiana Tech, you know, yeah, he played at Tennessee, but when you come up like that, it's hard to fully, especially as late as he did, because he came up late. Remember, he, he didn't come even through the spring. He just got thrown in the summer. So it's hard to make that transition like that. And and so to me, as the more I looked at him, the more I thought that he could potentially have that upside, even though there were some things last year. You know, he's not a super silky smooth athlete. But you look at this and say, Bub Means has that potential to be something big here. He had a really good spring game. I thought he was actually the best receiver in the spring game with Mumfield and Dejon Reynolds out. Um, I, I just think he's got a lot of upside to him as a big play threat. You know, I'm not sure he's a high volume target. I think he's a guy though that can hit big plays, that can hit you downfield. I think he's a guy that has starting to work into the slot a little bit more and do that a lot more comfortably. I think that it's made him a bit more kind of all around better. So Bub Means and Katani Mumfield, I think they're two guys that I do believe in and I think could be solid players. Outside of that, I just don't know what they have. You know, Dejon Reynolds, I think, has interesting traits. I think he's got a good contested catch rate. Um, he's got pretty good snap on his routes. Um, I don't think he's the fastest dude or the most athletic dude, but I think he's a guy that has good traits to be something. He's probably your wide receiver three right now. You know, Miles Austin transferred out. So who else is there? Um, so you, you know, Jake McConaughey, I mean, I mean, that's an interesting player, six foot five and super athletic a guy that can really jump. Um, I don't know if he's a legitimate option here kind of in this rotation, um, but you have Addison Copeland, you have Chano Abuco, um, you know, you have all the four freshmen, Lamar Seymour, Israel Polk, um, Kenny Johnson, Zion Fowler. You know, I, I think Polk and, and Seymour are interesting because they were on campus in the spring. Seymour's grown, man. That's a grown dude. Like, that is the thing about Lamar Seymour. His frame is so ready to play. And meanwhile, I think it's the opposite for Polk. He's not ready to play from a physical standpoint, but that mind is all there. I don't know if Seymour's ready to play from a game speed perspective. I just know he can go up and get me contested catches. He can go up and be a strong dude, go out there, block a little bit. Like, I know he can play because his frame is so ready to play his freshman year. Meanwhile, when I look at Izzy Polk, he's just so smooth. And more importantly, he's kind of got this weird aura about him that he's just a player, man. Like, he just has... A little something there. There's a little sauce there, tangibly, that I really like with Izzy Polk. So I think he's a potential guy to stand out. But I'll talk about why I think they need to transfer here. We'll talk about that. But first, folks, I want to let you know about FanDuel because, folks, Listen, you can make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because they're going on right now. And new customers can get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, you can get great promotions every day. It's a safe and secure cure app. You get paid instantly. There's so much you can use with FanDuel. And there's no better place to place all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet of up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 plus in select states. First online real money wagers only. 10 deposit required. Refund issued as a non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star City Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER to visit FanDuel.com slash RG. Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, and so many other places including Ohio. 
Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1 789 777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 800 Dine with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 Four seven zero zero, or visit kansasgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. One eight seven 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 seven. Stop in Louisiana. Gamblinghelpdilemma.org or call at eight hundred thirty two seven five zero five zero or twenty four seven. Support in Massachusetts or visit the Maryland Gamblinghelp.org at Maryland or one eight hundred dash eight Hope NY or text Hope NY four six seven three six nine. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming or visit www.1800gambler.net in West Virginia. All right, everybody. Let's get back to talking about this team at wide receiver. I think it's a group that you never really fully know what you're getting. And by that, I mean, you know, this is a group, man to me that is just it's underwhelming in terms of proven depth and proven guys and so I would like to add a proven guy and there are plenty of wide receivers hitting the portal right now you know you look at the transfer portal this late period and it is a a mad dash to go get some of these guys there are a ton of guys that stick out at wide receiver, for example. You look at Joran Hudson. Um, he's there. You look at, at Sadu Trower, you know, who's transferring from, from Colorado, a guy that, you know, played tight end but is really a, a flex type of wide receiver. You know, you look at all these different types of guys that you could potentially land. And it's kind of hard not to want to get the guy. A Jaquay Jackson, for example, a guy that's transferring Cal Ewan up, that's the type of guy you would want to get, right? Because that's a dude that kind of has a jump, yes, but he's also a guy that has these traits and, and – and can win at all three levels on tape. The tape's really good. You can go out and get a Jordan Tyson from Colorado. I think he's a very interesting player. Um, Montana Lamonius Craig, you know, just I would just jump in on every single receiver I could possibly jump in on because it is smart and you need to get proven depth. You could add one or two guys, you could add Xavier Henderson, you could add anybody really in this group of potential transfers that keep hitting the portal. And there are so many of them that you really just kind of need a guy that's in there that can really get you a fourth dependable guy. And you know, I think they have they can get a fifth with one of these young guys. And you know, Dejon Reynolds, I think, is also a guy that you can trust on. But I look at the unit right now and say, all right, I can trust Bob Means. To me, I trust Kanane Mumfield. But can I trust anyone else? And I, I don't have that full answer yet. I think I like one of those freshmen in Lamar Seymour Israel Polk to help. I think Dejan Reynolds will help me too if I'm Tyquan Underwood. I just think that this group needs another guy, needs someone else to make me feel fully comfortable with it. And that to me is kind of where it all comes together. Um, like really when we're looking at this all, it doesn't really come together until you add someone specifically to me that runs really solid routes. I think they need another separator because I think Reynolds, Seymour and means are guys that really do well working in zones or, or working downfield and kind of winning contested balls, but they don't get a ton of natural separation, which is fine. That is a valuable asset to have in the league right now. Um, but you also need guys that can separate like Kanane Mumfield. I'm worried if Kanane Mumfield goes down, they might not have that guy. I think Israel Polk can eventually be that. I'm just not sure his routes are crisp enough to be that yet. You know, they have 
potential in Shane Wabako to be that as a speedster. Um, but I just I'm not sure there's a dude there that's 100 percent like that yet. And so I need a guy that's a route runner to me, a guy that can play slot or outside, kind of just be kind of this interchangeable guy with Kadani Monfield and really help uh, be that wide receiver three, four, along with Dejon Reynolds and be that guy. You know, wide receiver to me is a big transfer portal need for this team, especially after Miles Austin transferred. Um, you know, they just lose depth. They just need some bodies too. I mean, it's just not a, it's not like a plentiful group. They took four wide receivers, obviously in the, in the fall to hopefully build this up for the future. But when we're talking about 2023 with Phil Dracovich and, and Rodney Hammond and Gavin Bartholomew and other guys like that, you know, you need guys. And, and I think I'll say this, even if they plan on being more tight end personnel, multiple, I, I think they will be more tight end multiple. I just want another guy there that you can kind of rely upon or lean back on and say, yeah, I, I kind of know who that guy is and, and I know what he's going to be. And I just think they lack that right now in terms of the comfortability factor. I think that's really the biggest thing um, when I look at this team is that I just don't have that comfortability factor at that wide receiver position yet. And so, you know, I buy in to those two, but the other guys are so are, are question marks and everyone starts off as question marks somewhere, but you want to make sure you have enough security in that room to where you're not panicking. If you have an injury, for example, or you're not panicking heading into the season. And I think that's kind of what needs to happen. And so I think Pitt's going to be in the market. I think they'll look for a wide receiver. They've offered plenty of those wide receivers already. And so I look at this team and say, yeah, I mean, it just makes sense for them to go out there and try and get so many of these players um, because of that, I think Pitt is that type of team that can use that depth specifically at wide receiver to really bolster what they have already in the core. Um, and so Tyquan Underwood, I'm sure, is out going hard. You know, they, they had plenty of late additions last year between Tyler Wiltz, Carter Johnson, um, Bob Means. All these guys ended up playing significant snaps last year. Sebo Flemister. Um, they all played significant snaps last year or will play significant snaps this year. And, and that is something that Pitt will do. I think they'll add multiple players. They still have enough open scholarships to do that. They haven't had a ton of transfers out. Um, so it's not plentiful in terms of that, but they have enough to make some real noise in terms of that in the transfer portal. By adding a receiver, maybe even two receivers of two different archetypes, I think a route runner and maybe a speedy guy would help. Uh, I think that could be something. They should shoot for the stars, but they should also just get a guy that they really trusted, just believe in the tape, you know, um, look at the tape and say, yeah, that can be our guy. I think that's kind of what this team needs to be um, and finding someone. Um, and, and so for me, Pitt is in that kind of realm with this position. And you can ask any quarterback or wide receiver or offensive coordinator how much wide receivers matter, even in this day and age uh, at where you may be more tight end person at multiple, uh, if you're a pro type offense like Pitt is with Frick Signetti's, you know, you still need those wide receivers to be able to work in that side outside. But more importantly, they need to be able to block. And, and you know, Kanani Mumfield fights a lot in blocking, but means fights a lot in blocking. Um, Lamar Seymour looks to me like he could be a plus in that area. Like that's where I think he makes a lot of sense. This dude's like six foot three and completely chiseled. Um, so, so this wide receiver room. It's kind of just a – it's a lot of questions. I think there's a lot of talent there. It's just where's the known? Where's the comfort? Uh, where's my security blanket? And I think that's kind of where you need it outside of the two you have already. And some of that can be made up with a tight end room, but not all of it can be made up with a tight end room. And, and so I think that's where, you know, I think the addition of Malcolm Epps is going to help that a little bit. But I don't think it's going to be completely there – in terms of making me feel comfortable without the position. And I don't think Pitt's comfortable about the position because they are continually pursuing wide receivers. And that is very evident based on the offers we have seen go out and some of the guys that we have really seen visit Pitt. Jaquay Jackson, for example, did visit Pitt. So could he be a Pitt Panther? I think that's an interesting question. I think that's a actually really fun proposition for them to maybe – look at but we'll see I, I think wide receiver though overall 
definitely a big need for this team, a team that needs to look in the portal for it, and we'll see if they can find it. All right, folks, as always, thank you for listening to the Locked on Pit podcast. The next time we'll be back, we will talk a little bit about those tight ends, Malcolm Emson, how much this multiple tight end personnel could help this team this upcoming season and how it could look on offense. It's all coming up then on Locked on Pit, folks, but as always, thank you for listening and hail 